Greetings, friends and Firebirds fans, and welcome to the February edition of the Fire and Ice podcast, the official podcast of your Coachella Valley Firebirds of the American Hockey League. Coming to you from sunny Palm Desert, California, just a slap shot away from the Firebirds home ice of Acrisure Arena. I'm your host, Judd Spicer, along with this monthly endeavor. Also have the pleasure and privilege of serving as the Firebirds insider in this inaugural season. A couple articles a month to that effect can be found online at cvfirebirds.com. Speaking of cvfirebirds.com, that is your home for all things Coachella Valley Firebirds, including, but certainly not limited to, tickets, schedule, roster information, merchandise, and much, much more. Additionally, you can download the CV Firebirds app. I might be a technical knucklehead myself, but I was able to figure that out in about 93 seconds. Great way to get tickets for your CV Firebirds game. Also an easy way to get parking for Acrisure Arena. Not just for games, by the way, but for all the concerts and events that are taking place at Acrisure. Probably should mention this as well. Don't think I have in the previous three episodes. Well, maybe I did at least once. The Coachella Valley Firebirds official team store actually sauntered over there last week. It was my mom's birthday. Got her a hoodie. Got her a stocking cap. Right on the corner of uh, El Paseo and San Pablo in Palm Desert. Great place to get yourself outfitted for your next CV Firebirds game. A lot to get to. A lot of superlatives, undoubtedly, on this February edition of the Fire and Ice podcast. Joining me shortly to discuss as much Firebirds starting defenseman and fellow Minnesota native Jimmy Schult will be joining me on this February edition of the program. Before we get to that chat with Jimmy, let's delve into this month's Firebirds freeze frame segment. Coming out of the All-Star break, a lot of good things happening in this debut year for the Firebirds. Speaking of that All-Star challenge, our favorite team had two representatives, the captain Max McCormick and defenseman Riker Evans, both of whom availed themselves quite well as the Pacific Division team went on to win that challenge. Captain Max contributed one assist and one goal over the course of those games, while Riker Evans got on the scorecard with one assist to his credit. Making the way out of the All-Star break, well, things could not be going much better for a team through 41 games, owning a record of 37 3 and one. That's a 780 winning percentage. Tracks best among all American Hockey League teams. Additionally, if not more over the 64 total points accrued by the Firebirds, tied for the Pacific Division lead with rival Calgary. That is uh, also tied with Calgary for the most points in the entire AHL. Firebirds also, well worthy of note, have points in 16 of their past 17 games heading out of this All-Star break. 41 games down, 31 games to go. Looking briefly at the schedule, or at least the home schedule, upcoming for the duration of February. This February 15th, that is a Wednesday, the Firebirds will host the Tucson Roadrunners. That's a 7 p.m. puck drop. Saturday, February 18th, back at home against Bakersfield. Six o'clock start. Got a holiday game. It's President's Day. Rivalry versus Ontario. That's a three o'clock start. And then Monday, February 27th against San Jose. That is a makeup game having uh, been shifted from last month or one of last month's to Harry Styles concert at Acrisure Arena. Transitioning to some statistics and some transactions, Firebirds frontliner, John Hayden, of course, he spent a little time being called up to the Big Daddy Club, the Seattle Kraken. John did have a nice degree of success in those games, tallying a goal. He has since been sent back to the Firebirds, I guess to our team's benefit. Also mentioned Captain Max McCormick. He was also briefly called up by Seattle. He, too, now back 
on the Firebirds roster. Leading scorers, Jesper Froden, and again, Captain Max McCormick, he's just been red hot of late. They are team co-leaders with 45 points each per max, 20 goals coupled with 25 assists. Jesper Froden, a team high 23 goals to go with his 12 assists. Andrew Podorowski, no shock that he's up there, led the AHL in scoring in each of the last two seasons. He's right up there with 42 points. That's 11 goals matched with a team high 31 assists. And Saskatchewan's Cole Lind, right on his skates with 41 points. That's 16 goals matched with 25 assists. Between the pipes, the superlatives and the accolades continue. Joey Decord having just a sensational season. Record of 18-5-1 in the net with a goals against average of 2.62. Christopher Gibson also availing himself quite well. Net record of 9-2-3. His goals against average this season, 2.79. All that offered, all that preface, friends. Let's get to this month's visit talking with defenseman Jimmy Schultz. All right, folks. My guest on the February edition of the Fire and Ice podcast, again, the official podcast of your Coachella Valley Firebirds. He was a three-time captain, two-time Kobe Baker Award finalist, and an All-American during his time at St. Cloud State. Since endeavored an impressive five-year professional hockey career this season, of course, starting defenseman, for your Coachella Valley Firebirds, availing himself quite well. He's got 15 points, five goals, and 10 assists. Two of those shorthanded goals, I should add, along with a plus-minus in the good column. That's a plus of 17. Welcome, Minnesota native Jimmy Schultz to the Fire and Ice podcast. Hello, Jimmy. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah. Did I get all those accolades right? I probably missed a few awards. Uh, no, I mean... I think that that seems about right. My my time at St. Cloud was was a lot of fun. We were we were so good that someone had to, um, I guess, get the awards. And we had uh, we had a lot of All Americans those last couple of years while I was there, um, and my freshman year as well when we were uh, when we had a really good season. So um, no, that sounds about right. And uh, I actually I actually had no idea how many points I had or, or this year. I'm try try to like stay away from that. So. Appreciate you filling me in. <laughs> don't worry. You try to stay away from your own statistics. Yeah, just because that I, I I don't feel like I'm, it sounds probably pretty corny or whatever, but uh, I I don't think that like defines how I play is how many points I get. Um, just as a defenseman, and, um, if I if I play the right way, and I, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm getting points or uh, showing up in the score sheet. So if I get too caught up in that, then I feel like that may leak into my game a little bit and. I think we've been winning, so I uh, I haven't been too too obsessed over that. Understood. Um, we'll get back to some of those, maybe not statistics, but at least performance and team performance here in just a second. Of course, we are talking as uh, the Firebirds are denesting or unnesting from the All Star break. I mean, you've had uh, what I trust to be several days off in this first uh, full week of February. How'd you spend those days? Uh, so I was in San Diego for, for a day with my fiance and then, uh, made the trip home, uh, to Minnesota to be with, be with family for a bit. Um, some, just some much needed time with my brothers and, uh, and parents and, um, and my fiance's family as well. So, uh, it wasn't exactly a a warm and sunny break for, (laughs) for me and my family, but, um, they've been out here a couple of times. So, uh, it was, uh, now it's good to be back in the desert and, see the sun and get some vitamin D again, but uh, love going back to Minnesota and just and being around those, those people. And I think it was much needed this time. But this is why we live out here. So we can be out here when it's 78 degrees and idyllic, Jimmy, not to go back there in February when it's minus six, man. Yeah. Well, it, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was just good to see him. And um, next time I go back, it'll be probably about 70 and sunny there when it's um, hopefully about 110 here in, in mid June, so that'll that'll be uh, that'll be a good trade off that time. But um, yeah, for this time it it was uh, it, it's getting warmer there. I think spring's just around the corner. But, <laughs> but we've been my uh, my fiance Maggie and I and just I think all the boys have just been loving this. And 
Um, it's a real treat to just be able to go outside after practice and see the sun and see the snow capped mountains with, with also some, some palm trees in, in the foreground. It's, uh, something special here for sure. It really is, man. I've been out here myself, um, for about a dozen years, having relocated from St. Paul, Minnesota. And I honestly believe, not just saying that because you and I were chatting, not just saying this because this is the Firebirds podcast. For these four, five months, this pocket of time, I believe that the Coachella Valley is the best place in the world. I really do, man. Oh, I, it, it actually, I think we would probably agree with that because uh, every everyone talks about, how, you know, San Diego and Malibu and all those places that have the best weather. Um, and guys went there for break and uh, compared weather beforehand, it's like, hold on a minute. I think it's going to be nicer here <laughs> than there. And this is supposed to be like the best time of year for, for either of these places. So um, just head to head right now. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say Coachella Valley is, uh, it's gotta be cause 70 and sunny every single day is, that's the best it gets. Um, previous to your time here in the desert, you've had uh, some few other AHL stops. I'm just curious for you. And then also interested in your thoughts on the team cumulatively, what, uh, you guys may have enjoyed how you've settled into your desert home over the course of the past few months. Yeah. I mean, it's been, uh, it's been different. Than, than years past obviously we played through a couple of COVID years and those have been those have been a little bit weird but um just having started the season in, in Seattle not really having a home and, and training out of that facility and um you know just being on the road for so long I, I think it, it sort of uh it was tough at times to not you know be able to play in front of a home crowd or or have like a a, a house or apartment to go back to but I think playing on the road is like something that's really fun in, in pro hockey. And, um, you know, you get to just be just with your team, just with your, uh, you know, the team and staff and, and everything's, everyone's kind of in it together, going to dinners and, um, you know, being at the same hotels. And uh, I think it was almost good for us just to, to get to know each other. Cause this is a brand new thing, brand new team. And um, to have that time was, was special, but it was also a bit of a grind. Um, and, and to come out of that, uh, putting ourselves in a good spot in the standings, I think was, was so good because we just kind of had that extra boost when we, when we were able to play in front of our home fans and, um, and finally get this rank done. And uh, I mean, as you know, and as everyone knows, it's, this is state of the art and it's uh, like, I mean, it's so cool to play in front of these packed barns and uh, in such a nice place. But I think, uh, I don't know, it, it was weird, weird to start off, but I think there was definitely um, some good that came out of it. And um, yeah, we're just, we're just happy to have a home and have so many home games ahead of us. Now that you've got your feet firmly affixed in the desert sands, what have you personally been enjoying about the desert? Maybe opportunity to knock around, play some golf a little bit, uh, oh, perhaps yeah. to go around then all some restaurants, downtown Palm Springs, El Paseo. There's a lot of events going on right now. You tell me, Jimmy. Yeah, tons of that. I think uh, uh, I lived in the desert a couple years ago when I played for uh, played in Henderson and um it's nice there, and it's. I think the landscape is just kind of cool to to be around mountains and um, just have that. The you know, I think something that's underrated here, or maybe not underrated, but as far as I've kind of uh, gathered, is there's so many cool hiking places and just places where you can just go and and see the city from uh, from like a different vantage point. Um, so I I love hiking. We love doing that as much as we can. But but you're right. There's I mean there every single every single place you look, there's a new golf course and. We've uh, our team is <laughs> is very competitive uh, off the ice, and we like to we like to have matches. And um, when we're not competing at the rink, we're competing on the course. Um, you know, on our off days, and uh, yeah, we can. We've had a little uh, little Ryder Cup in the past couple of weeks, uh, U.S. versus Canada, and <laughs> with, the, with the Europeans sprinkling in there a little bit. And unfortunately, uh, the Canadians took us down, but we are we're looking forward to the rematch. What uh, or rather, whom among your uh, your playing teammates uh, is the best player? Is the best golfer? It's pretty close, but I think uh, we're gonna have to give that to to Cam Hughes, um, and he, of course, is on the Canadian side. But uh, yeah, he just he's so so consistent, and I think that's something that is kind of hard to find in in hockey players because we're I would say like as a group we have a pretty good like. A pretty good team of golfers and um guys can hit the ball pretty far and 
I just think like it's so similar. Most of the lefties are lefty golfers. Most of the righties are righty golfers. And um, it's just like such a similar thing to hockey, but it's something that we don't, we don't practice it enough. So none of us are really consistent enough to, to really be down there towards scratch. But I think, I think Hughes, he's probably a one, maybe a two. Uh, and at times I think he's gotten down to, to scratch golfer and um, Potter else. He's right there. Um, I think I hate to say it, but I think Lind uh, is close most days um to those two and uh and we've got a bunch of guys that are that are really good but i think for the most part we've we're probably around eight to ten you're probably around, uh, being a bit modest i didn't hear your own name mentioned on that list i'm certainly not in the top five uh of of our guys but i think it's like it's funny that we we've got a few guys that are like really good golfers and then there's like a big chunk of us that are around eight to twelve ish handicap um so that's why that's kind of why we thought of like we have about the same amount of uh, Americans and Canadians, and we honestly have like a really similar, like all of us are pretty close to to being you know, like we could we can kind of play matches straight up, and except for the few guys that are better and the few guys that don't really golf. Um, so that was the idea, and it came out came down to the last match. We had uh, <laughs> we had Mullen Mullen beat uh, Jake McLaughlin, so. We were all we were all gathered around the 18th green watching watching the U.S. go down. So, as a peak professional athletes, is it incumbent upon you to always play from the tips? For myself personally, no, uh, okay. because that makes it more frustrating. Um, <laughs> sure, I, I've heard I've heard like pro golfers say that like their dad or their coach wouldn't let them move back to the, you know certain tees until they broke broke even from from the front ones. Yeah. Um, which is good, but I wouldn't say that, like, I, I would just rather not be hitting a, you know, four iron into a par four if I don't need to. Um, so I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to do my best from the, the second, second to back tees and not, and not think I'm a pro golfer, but, um, yeah. Well, I've had the pleasure of teeing up with some of the Firebirds brass and, uh, your goalie coach, uh, I think it might butcher his name, Colin Zulianello. Um, we had oh, some good. fun, yeah. but, uh, I look forward to, to getting out with some of the players as well. Uh, at some point during the season, sounds like, uh, you probably have to kick me back a couple strokes, but that's how I live here. I always, that's why I always say to people, if you don't live here and play golf, you're missing out on the lifeblood, the culture of the desert. Yeah. Yeah. Are you good? It sounds like I'm an 11. Okay. So like I said, you might have to kick me a few each side, but keep it close. Yeah, I don't know. I, with, with the amount we play, I don't know if I should be giving anyone strokes. But well, uh, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to take you on. Uh, you mentioned uh, the different uh, nationalities of players on the team. Let's specify that a little bit more. Uh, domestically, certainly uh, not uncommon. Annually, never uncommon for the state of Minnesota to have the most professional hockey players across both the uh, AHL and the NHL. Uh, Minnesota usually has the most uh, of any state. And the Firebirds, certainly no exception. Four Minnesota native players, and then we've got assistant coach Stu Bickle, of course, uh, who has been a previous guest of this program. So all told, we've got five Minnesotans uh, on the Firebirds or coaching the Firebirds. Is that something that uh, you've talked about? Is that a is that a point of pride? Yeah, it is. And uh, Matt Tennyson wouldn't probably consider himself a Minnesota. He wouldn't consider himself a Minnesotan, but he was born there, um, and. I actually just found out by uh, talking to his parents that he went to the same school district I did until he was probably like eight or nine years old, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. They, they grew up like a couple miles from me, <laughs> um, but he would uh, probably consider himself more of more of a Californian or he's moved around a lot. But uh, okay. yeah, I think but it is cool. I think just fun to hang out with people that, you know you've played against growing up and uh, in college, like I did against Pagansky and we have some mutual friends, obviously, which, uh, which we bonded over early, but, um, but yeah, it's cool. To, cool to have all those Minnesota guys. And usually you don't go very many games without playing against another guy that, that, you know, just from growing up or, uh, you know, cause he's, uh, cause they're, they're living in Minnie in the summer, which actually <laughs> Gustav Olofsson does. So uh, I would say, He's almost more of a Minnesota guy than, than Jonathan. 
Well, of course, we, he had a cup of coffee with the Wild, so maybe he just liked it and stayed. Yeah, and he, he I know he married a girl from uh, from Green Bay, so, and they just live in the summer uh, in Minnesota with his younger brother, Freddie. Okay. So, so I like to... I like to consider him if he's if he's not considering himself Swedish, he is basically basically a Minnesota guy. He's an honorary Minnesotan. Honorary, uh, we'll take him. Not mentioned on that list is a gentleman, often uh, your line mate in the starting uh, defensive uh, side beside you, uh, principal native Eddie Whitcow, uh, another Minnesota guy. You two usually start or oftentimes have throughout the course of the season side by side on defense. Um, any mind meld there with the Minnesota background between you two? Uh, so he was a, a few years older than me, I don't, and he uh, played in Burnsville. But he, I know he played with my my older brother Joe uh, growing up, and um, so I, I, of course, know, just have known him um, for just being in the summer, like kind of skating in the summer and uh, and just being around. But um, I missed him in high school, and I also missed him just because he played at Wisconsin, and uh, after the WCHA conference was broken up st cloud and wisconsin don't play each other much um in college so it was mostly just kind of knowing of each other and maybe meeting every like once or twice but we get we've gotten along really well just because i think minnesota guys gravitate gravitate towards each other so um we've even gravitated towards each other uh on the bench and, and started started playing together so it's been a lot of fun folks are tuning into the february edition of the Fire and Ice podcast, the official co- uh, podcast, rather, of your Coachella Valley Firebirds. Starting defenseman Jimmy Schult is my guest. Jimmy, let's talk about your career a little more specifically. It's uh, an interesting arc. I don't know if you will like this mention or this, I don't want to say it's even a comparison, Field of Dreams. You've seen uh, Field of Dreams uh, as a sportsman, I, I gather. Uh, yeah. Moonlight Graham, uh, Burt Lancaster in Field, of, in Field of Dreams, of course, the story behind that. He appeared in one uh, major league uh, game uh, in your career. It's surprising given all your success, given your talent, given the fact that you've been a key contributor on a lot of good AHL teams, just the one NHL game to date that coming a few years back. Does that surprise you? Um, so I, I think something that I've learned um, in the past four years, just playing pro is how hard it is to get there. Um, and, I think, you know, I would I would really like to think that that I'm I'm definitely going to get back uh, someday. And, um, you know, this year, uh, like signing a, an American League contract for the first time was, um, I mean, obviously something that I was excited for just to be here and be in this organization, but something different. Um, and I think that hopefully, you know, I can turn this into to something something in, in the future that uh, allows me to get back in the NHL. But um i don't yeah i i just think i wouldn't say it's surprising just because the american league is such a good league and um you know everyone everyone gets opportunities for different reasons and and for me i got uh that one game opportunity because i i had a, had a good college career and um was lucky enough to just get in a game after my season uh after my senior season and um you know it's with uh with the two two years that were kind of half years um, in the American League, and um, you know, last year with just a, such a talented young decor in, in Buffalo, I, I haven't really um, been given the opportunity. But I'd like to think that there's there's more games ahead of me, and um, I think if I can keep learning and keep growing my game, that I'll uh, I'd like to get back. So um, right now, it's it's been a lot of fun here. Uh, I'd like to I like to live in the here and now, and um, I just think this is such a great place to be that. Uh, it's it's not like a it's not like a bummer that, that it's only it's only been one game. I, I think it's um, just something that I, I'd like to believe that I can do again. We can discuss even a little further. Just keeping your eyes on the prize. I mean, I know a guy like it. Uh, when I started recording this specific program, uh, I'd mentioned that John Hayden. He'd been called up and down. I believe twice in the last couple of weeks when I started recording this show, he was still on the Firebirds roster uh, in the uh, short time since. He has now been called back up by uh, Seattle to rejoin them. I mean, you know, I've, I've spoken with uh, some of your teammates about this very thing, that at the AHL level, if you don't, yeah, you 
you enjoy it here, but you don't want to be here. You're trying to get back to that NHL level. And if you don't have your eyes on the prize for a couple days, a couple weeks, just a couple games, someone else is going to pass you by and take your spot. How do you personally keep motivated? Um, I just think it's, yeah, you're absolutely right. You you, you want to keep your eyes and, and your your kind of goals set on that and, and playing in the NHL. Um, but at the same time, if you're if you're not helping your team win here, you're not going to be helping your team win at the next level. So um, I just think like kind of trusting the process and, and, and doing your best that you can here is, is for me the the most logical way to do that. So, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm letting that get me down that, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting opportunity at the, at the next level or, you know, thinking about my contract or, or that sort of thing, then that's just distracting you from, from helping this team win here. And, um, you know, obviously, when you really look at it, GMs, coaches, teams look at who can help them win because it's all about winning games. And, and you know, players are just kind of pieces of, uh, of that recipe. So um, the, the better you, the best you can do, I think, is just help your team win here and, and prove that uh, you can help someone win at the next level. So um, I think that's really – that's kind of the way I look at it. And um, I just – I believe in that and – uh hopefully that'll that'll work uh, at the next level as well well you mentioned the word uh win or wins on multiple occasions in that response through 41 games your firebirds record of 37 3 and 1 41 games down 31 games to go win percentage of 780 the best in the american hockey league 64 points tied for best with your division rival calgary at the onset of the season, perhaps even considering, Jimmy, all the logistics, all the moving around, the time in Seattle, getting the arena ready, getting you guys down here. Did you ever think that you guys would be this good? It was kind of hard to say. Um, when we got here, I think, in camp, and, and we really – you really kind of looked at, like, Seattle's roster and um, when things started falling into place, we knew we'd be good. Um, it wasn't like a – and that I feel like that's not like a – overly confident or cocky thing to say just because like we had guys that have had previous success like um you know Andrew Podorowski has won multiple uh multiple Calder Cups and was the captain of the team last year and you, you kind of knew um you know as things started boiling down in, in Seattle's camp like who would sort of be where and how how things would fit in to at least start the season and um we knew we, we'd have the players to, to kind of have that opportunity and um in the beginning of the year I don't know if this is something that our coaches have, have told you or anything. We, we kind of sat down and uh, I think in Calgary and we're like, this is how many team, this is how many wins um, the best team in the regular season had last year. How many wins do we think we can have? And I think it was broken. Rafferty was like, I think we can win 45 games. And I, I don't know exactly what we'd have to do the math of what the winning percentage would be. Um, but we're certainly on pace for that. Uh, we're at 30 wins and we have a, and the number 45 in our locker room and um, each game puck underneath it. So we're at 30 right now. And uh, I think we've set ourselves up to, to get to that 45 and, and that's our goal. And, um, and potentially, you know, if we keep things going like they are now, potentially even surpass that. So um, I think that was, that was sort of a, you know, obviously a, a, a good goal to have and um, not, I, I wouldn't say that was lofty for us. That was just kind of, what we thought was realistic and so if that gives you an idea then I, I think yeah I think we thought we we could be this good for sure it does uh, give me an idea as I trust it does for the fire and ice listeners had a not dissimilar conversation to that very point with head coach Dan Bilesma a couple of weeks ago and he didn't tell me about that 45 that is specifically in your uh, locker room but he did tell me that at the onset of the season you guys gathered as a group assessed the season looked at the schedule and had a number in mind where you thought you could or should be. And then he kind of stepped back a little bit. Sportsmen are superstitious, of course, but I, I let him know that, hey, man, whatever that number is, chances are you're tracking right now to likely surpass that. Yeah, and that's, I don't know, maybe he is more superstitious than me. Uh, <laughs> if, if you look at any, like, starting lineup video that, that's on Instagram, you could probably see it. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't think it was a secret or anything. Um, maybe it is for him. So sorry, Dan, if you, uh, <laughs> if you didn't want people to know that, but I just think, I mean, if we, if we don't get there, it's, it's still like a, a goal that we, 
we want to get to. Um, so it's not, I wouldn't say it's a like a do or die type of thing. It's just what we thought we could get to. And um, I think that's, that's still something we'd like to, we'd like to achieve. One more for you today, Jimmy, uh, last year with the uh, Rochester, uh, another winning team for you. I think I actually had to go back. It might've been for you in high school. I don't know the last time that you were not on a winning team. Every team that I see that you've been on and throughout the AHL and through college is a team with a, with a winning record. Um, but given your experience in the uh, Calder cup playoffs with Rochester last year, we're still a ways away from that. As I said, 31 uh, games to go get into the home stretch of the season, but what can we, as a new fan base here in the desert expect for just a level of play level intensity that's going to come eventually with the, the, the home push of the last handful of games or so. And then the Calder cup playoffs. Yeah, it's a, it's another animal in the playoffs. I, I wasn't able to experience it my first year uh, because it was cut short due to COVID. And then my second year we had like a Pacific division sort of uh, short playoff type of thing. Um, and I don't, I don't think any of the other divisions even played, but um, last year was cool. We, we snuck in, we were able to, um, or, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. getting a call here, send a voicemail, uh, trainer, <laughs> equipment managers call me cause my, my bag's probably not on the truck, but, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we were able to get help at like the bet, like last two games of the season and then win our last game in order to get into the playoffs. And, and we had a little, the little play in round against Belleville, which uh, we won a couple games in overtime and then um, we're able to knock off the the best team in the league. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Judd, he's, we're doing a little fire and ice podcast. Hey, Brogan says hi. What's hey. up, man? Sorry, I'm grabbing some grinds. Um, all right. I think you're already, he's already mentioned on this episode. Now we get, now we yeah, get in person. One three, right? One. Oh my God! Actually, yeah. All right. Well, John, I got to go. we're gonna we're gonna cut that answer short. We'll save it for right. a different opportunity next time. Jimmy Shell, appreciate you joining the Fire and Ice podcast. Don't miss that. Right. Bus. Go, man. All right. Bye. Love you guys. See ya. Appreciate your time. <laughs> all right there folks pretty sure you caught the the end of that where jimmy almost missed the bus fire and ice almost kept jimmy from uh, catching the bus to uh, go play the san diego gulls <laughs> probably would have got a quick message or two from head coach dan bilesba had uh, that happened fear not and i've uh, i've already uh, Got a, a quick uh, update clarification. Not Jimmy's fault. Not Jimmy's fault that we uh, almost ran in or over the uh, bus <laughs> departure time. Folks, so appreciative of your time, your interest, your ears. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to the February edition of the Fire and Ice podcast. I have been your host, Judd Spicer. Additional appreciation for this month's guest defenseman, Jimmy Schult also got a uh, quick cameo there from his uh, fellow defenseman, Brogan Rafferty. Trust you, you caught that. Gentle reminder to catch the uh, Firebirds Insider articles coming from yours truly. You can find those couple of month online at cvfirebirds.com. Of course, that's where you're going to want to go for all things Firebirds, including certainly not limited to ticketing, schedule, stats, roster information, and merchandise. Per that merchandise, if you're strolling along El Paseo, the corner of El Paseo and San Pablo and Palm Desert, stroll on in to that official store of the CD Firebirds and get yourself outfitted for the next game at Akershire Arena. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. Remember, one valley, one team, rising together.